Welcome to the Pacific Flyway Shoreward Survey Protocol and Data Sheet Review video. In this video, we will review the Bird Survey Protocol and how to collect survey area conditions, as well as where to record this information on your data sheet for each type of survey included in the Pacific Flyway Shoreward Survey. This includes area search transects, point count transects, and coastal area searches. Please have a copy of your specific project's data sheet and protocol as you review this video. For all surveys, the same general survey protocol applies. Just before you begin your survey, make note of and record the start time on your data sheet. For coastal area search surveys, the start time may be provided to you by your site coordinator. Then, as you approach your survey area, make note of the conditions of the surroundings. Do you see any birds? Are there any obvious potential sources of disturbance nearby? This will help you make an efficient and accurate count of your survey area. When you have arrived at your vantage point, all shorebirds using the survey area should be identified to species and counted. To be using the area, a shorebird must land in the survey area during the count. This includes shorebirds that enter or leave the survey area, but not shorebirds that fly over. Also count and identify raptors. Raptors do not need to be in the survey area in order to be counted. Rather, record raptors that are in, adjacent to, or that fly over the survey area. Use your best judgment when recording raptors that are near the survey area and record raptors that have the potential to influence shorebird behavior. Raptors for the Pacific Flyway Shorebird Survey include both turkey vultures and owls. Survey areas that appear to have zero birds should be carefully scanned using binoculars and a spotting scope for at least two minutes. Once all birds are counted, record the end time on your data sheet. At this time, no additional birds may be added. You can use as much time as you need, but please be aware of the amount of daylight remaining. And at coastal sites, make sure to complete your survey within the time frame specified by your site coordinator. Next. Let's review each survey protocol in more detail. There are three main types of surveys. The first is the point count transect. These surveys are generally conducted along public roads and agricultural areas. Each point count transect consists of a series of circular areas where surveys are conducted from predetermined locations. Generally, point count transects are 10 miles long with survey locations located approximately every half a mile for a total of 20 survey locations per transect. However, some transects may be less than 10 miles and have less than 20 locations. Please refer to your specific road transect map and accompanying narrative for information about your route. At each survey location, observers count all shorebirds and raptors within a 0.1 mile or 160 meter radius and record survey area conditions. Observers are asked to count from one location only. The data sheet for the point count transect consists of multiple columns. Each column represents one survey area along the point count transect. Start and end times should be recorded for each survey area. Bird observations are recorded in the lower half of the data sheet. <clears throat> Some of the more common species are listed for you on the left side of the data sheet. Use the lower portion to fill in other shorebird species and raptors seen during your surveys. The date, route number, observer, and recorder information is entered in the upper right side of the data sheet. The bottom of one side of the data sheet contains a cheat sheet for survey area condition data, and the other side contains a section for your notes. Please refer to the formal protocol for more detail on the categories of survey area conditions. We will review these data later in the video. The next type of survey is the area search transect. These surveys are generally conducted along roads within managed wetlands. Each area search transect consists of a series of specific areas. Each survey area extends from the road into a wetland unit 0.1 miles or 160 meters. Please refer to your specific road transect map and narrative for information about your route. At each survey area, observers count all shorebirds and raptors within 0.1 miles or 160 meters of the road 
and record survey area conditions. In contrast to the point count transect, observers are able to and encouraged to move around to obtain the best view into the wetland unit. The data sheet for the survey area transect is very similar to the point count transect. There is one column for each survey area along the transect. Please refer to the guidelines already reviewed for the point count transect data sheet for filling out the area search transect data sheet. The third type of survey is the coastal area search. These surveys are conducted at coastal estuaries and may consist of one to many different survey areas depending on the size of the estuary being covered. Surveys of the same coastal estuary are conducted on the same day and time to obtain a snapshot of the birds using the estuary. The day and time for your survey will be determined by your site coordinator based on appropriate tidal conditions. On the day of the survey, count and identify all shorebirds and raptors within your survey areas as defined on your map. Surveys must be completed within the time frame as indicated to you by your site coordinator. The data sheet for the coastal area search differs from the point count and area search transects. For coastal area searches, use one data sheet for each area you survey. One side of the data sheet is for recording bird observations and the other is for recording survey area conditions. Let's review the bird observation side first. On the data sheet, record the start and end times. Bird observations are recorded in a specified area for shorebirds and for raptors. The more common species are listed for you, however, please record all shorebirds and raptors seen, not just those listed on the data sheet. The date, survey area, observers, and recorder information are filled out at the top of the data sheet. Turning the data sheet over, you will find places to record the survey area conditions, which we will discuss now. Now that you have counted and recorded all of your shorebird and raptor observations, it is time to record the survey area conditions. Why record this information? This type of data helps control for variation among counts at different sampling units. For example, a survey area with little mudflat will likely have fewer shorebirds than a survey area with lots of mudflat. This data helps characterize survey areas and track changes to the habitat over time, which in, turn, which in turn can help explain changes in shorebird use of certain areas. The information you collect at your site will be used with data collected throughout the Pacific Flyway to assess habitat change at multiple scales. As we go over each survey area condition, please follow along with your data sheet. On the point count transect and area search transect data sheets, survey area conditions are recorded for each survey area near the top of the data sheet. On the coastal area search data sheet, Survey area conditions are recorded on the second side of the data sheet. Please note that at large survey areas, such as those encountered at coastal estuaries, it may be important to track the survey area conditions as you move through your area counting birds. You can make notes as you go or retrace your steps and collect this data after you have finished counting the birds. Though already mentioned during the bird count protocol, start time and end time are recorded for each survey area. Observers' names are also recorded and broken down into different types of observers. The primary observer, or observer 1, is the person counting the birds. If there are two people counting the birds, please indicate this by using the observer 2 space or by writing this information in the notes section of the data sheet. The data recorder is the person writing down the data. Other observers are anyone else accompanying the surveyor and data recorders. Only those people listed as observers should be counting birds. The first few pieces of information about your site include weather conditions. Record the average wind speed during your survey using the categories provided. If wind speed is consistently above 25 miles per hour, the count should not be conducted but rescheduled for another time. Please be sure to be in contact with your site coordinator if there are any questions about weather conditions and whether or not the survey should be conducted. Next, record the percent of a sky that is covered by clouds. Keep this to the general vicinity of the survey area. Surveys should not be conducted with heavy fog that obscures your view of the survey area. If encountered, describe the type of precipitation. If there is steady rain falling that obscures your view into the survey area, the count should be rescheduled. Intermittent rain is usually fine as long as you can still adequately serve your areas. Again, 
please make sure to be in contact with your site coordinator if you have any questions about whether or not to conduct your survey. Now let's go over the characteristics of the survey area. The cover type is the type of habitat that makes up the majority of the survey area. In order to be the majority, one to two cover types must comprise 80% of the survey area. Please keep this in mind as you think about your cover type. Note that only two cover types can be recorded, and each must be at least 40% of the survey area. Here are some examples of common cover types. Please also refer to the full protocol for all of the cover types listed and descriptions of each of them. Pasture can be flooded or not flooded and generally looks like a grassy field. Livestock may or may not be present. Winter wheat fields may be harvested and stubble may be left standing as shown in this photo. Or winter wheat fields may already have been planted and in this case young green plants may be starting to grow. Alfalfa fields are generally still planted in winter though the plants may be dormant. Rice fields will generally be harvested by the time the survey is conducted. And if not flooded, you may see leftover rice plant in the field. However, when flooded, it may be more difficult to see the remnants of rice production. Most agricultural fields in California that are flooded in winter were in rice production. Finally, tidal mudflat is open mud in an estuary that is subject to tidal influence. If you have further questions about cover types, Try and search for images on the internet or contact your project coordinator for more details. Your map will outline your survey area and all shorebirds and raptors within that area should be counted and identified. However, there may be obstructions, tall vegetation, or access issues that limit your ability to see the entire survey area. For this reason, we ask you to record the visible area or percent of the survey area as depicted on your map that you could see and subsequently survey for shorebirds and raptors. At larger coastal survey sites, it may be useful to shade areas on your map that you could not see as you move about the survey area and use this to determine the percent that was visible at the end of the survey. Along road transects, it will usually be possible to determine the visible area for each survey area at the time of the survey. In this example, the orange indicates the amount of the survey area that is visible, and the black indicates the amount that is not visible. So for this survey area, 75% would be recorded as the amount of visible area. Next, of the visible area, note the percent that is flooded, bare, and vegetated. By flooded, we mean covered by water, whether that is 1 inch or 12 feet. Bare ground is referring to dirt or mud in the survey area but not concrete, pavement, rocks, or other substrates. Please only include dirt or mud in bare ground. Finally, record the percent of the survey area you can see that is covered by vegetation. Then estimate the height of the vegetation and record that using the categories provided to you. Sometimes the percent flooded, bare, and vegetated will sum nicely to 100%. However, this may not always be the case. These three categories may not sum to 100%, sometimes will, but should never be greater than 100%. A couple of additional points about vegetation. Generally, vegetation over five feet obstructs your view of the survey area, and you should account for this by decreasing the percent visible area. If you can see to the other side of vegetation, it does not reduce the amount of visible area, even if you cannot see into the vegetation. So, as long as you can see over the vegetation, it does not reduce the visible area. Here is an example of a survey area in a coastal estuary denoted by the red polygon. Within this polygon, we can see 100% of the survey area from our vantage point. The dominant cover type is tidal mudflat, which comprises 80% of the survey area. Therefore, only one cover type is recorded. About 50% of the survey area that we can see is flooded and 50% is bare mud. There is no vegetation. Another example, this one from a managed wetland. Imagine the survey area boundary extends past the tall vegetation. 
Thus, tall vegetation obstructs our view and we can only see part of the survey area, about 50%. Of the area that we can see, 70% is flooded, zero is bare ground or mud, and 30% is vegetated. You can practice more with the survey area conditions by looking up different images on the internet. Before heading out into the field, make sure you have everything you need. Here is a reminder about what to take in the field for both your safety and comfort. Thank you for watching this and listening to this video. Good luck on your survey, and thank you for helping make Shorebirds count.